Thanks for staying with us. Um, the World Health Organization recently ranked Nigeria 187 out of 191 countries in its ranking of the world health health system above only three countries in the world while neighboring countries like ghana togo niger mali and chad were ranked better than nigeria despite several attempts at reform over the past 30 years nigeria still lacks a clear and coordinated approach to primary health care joining us to discuss medical tourism is dr olamide okunlaja and is, he is the medical, the director of advocacy and communication at Farm Access Foundation in Nigeria. Remember, you can join the conversation, tweet to us at Plus TV Africa or at Way Show Africa One with the hashtag Ways, or you can send a WhatsApp message or SMS to 081 8038 Thanks for joining us, Doctor. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so why do we have these shocking um, figures in terms of numbers? While we ranked, I mean, we just have, we are just above by three countries. Is it that, is it that bad? Or is just World Health trying to scale us? The truth is, it is that bad. The Nigerian healthcare system is in a dire situation. Um, currently, we have the highest in everything. We have the highest in maternal mortality burden. We have the highest neonatal mortality burden. We have the highest under five mortality burden. We have the highest malaria incidence. We have the highest NCDs. Like, um, Nigeria's healthcare system is really bad. And a lot of the uh, things that are attributed to that is the lack of um, financing available, but beyond that also the systems mm. that are in place to ensure that all these things, um, you know, uh, are sort of properly taken care of. Uh, Nigeria is a country with a lot of potential, you know, and unfortunately sometimes when you have a lot of good cooks, it spoils the broth. Mm. So we have different people coming up with different ideas and administration after administration, there are different strategies and laws, but unfortunately because there has not been a coordinated and concerted approach, um, it has left us where we are, where our healthcare system is really bad. Hmm. So where's the hope? You see, the hope is there are a lot of people that, are, that have dedicated their lives to ensuring that um, Nigeria, uh, the healthcare system, you know, is improved one way or the other. Um, you have a lot of um, developmental partners um, that are very interested in ensuring that the healthcare system gets up. You also have a government, you know, that is very interested in improving the healthcare system, but th there is a problem. Uh, and the major problem is that over the last 10 years, N Nigeria has allocated between 3 to 5% of its entire budget um, to, to healthcare. Uh, you know, the, 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 the WHO recommends a minimum of 15%. And in fact, there was an Abuja declaration, I don't know if you know about it, it, it about 191 countries came together and made, made a declaration that they would allocate about 15% of their entire budgets to healthcare. Uh, after 10 years, it was only one country that did that. It was Tanzania and Nigeria, of course, up till to date, um, has um, not allocated much more. Um, the allocation to healthcare in 2020 was about 4.1%. Mm. And majority of that is for recurrent expenditure, which means that they're using those monies to pay salaries of status quo. So the, the fiscal space to actually improve um, the, the standards of healthcare is very limited. And again, you look at the ability of Nigeria to generate revenues is actually very poor. I'm not sure if a lot of people know this, but in 2018, Nigeria was, um, despite requiring about, I think, 7.9 trillion, we're only able to generate, 7.6 trillion, we're only able to generate about 3.9 trillion. Uh, and we needed 9.1 trillion. You know, mm -hmm. Nigeria's borrowing over the last four years has increased by 780%. You know, so again, the fiscal space to do a lot of things is very limited. You look at a space, it look like a place like Lagos State. The, the revenue to GDP ratio in Lagos State is about 6%, which means that out of all the monies that are being generated in Lagos State, Lagos State can only contribute about 6% 6 6 of that revenue. So looking at governments to actually solve our problem in terms of financing healthcare is, is foolhardy. The real solution is in the private sector. And looking at how we can harness some financing from the private sector to improve both the demand and supply side of healthcare interventions. 
Okay, so now looking at um, the recent um, um, medical tourism ban uh, by the very hostile letter calling us aliens and aliens in that letter. It's, it's I, I don't like that letter. So where does that leave um, uh, medical tourism, particularly for people who travel abroad to give birth? Where does that leave us, at least in the next two years? Because if there's going to be any changes... you in your country to have your children in your it, country. But no, <laughs> but the reason people leave Nigeria is because they don't trust the medical facilities here to take care of them, especially people who it seems they're having birth complications. So my question is, those people, where does that leave them? Because if we're expecting any change, we're looking at maybe a two-year period. But the statistics that he has even given mm. even tells you that there's a problem. In-house. So, in Nigeria, you have a problem. So medical tourism is not going anywhere. This, these stats that he's reeled out are quite scary. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah. I can say for a fact that maybe not all, I think about 80% of women, because you're, you're referring to the letter from the United States government, right? Yeah. 80% of women that go to give birth to their children abroad, it's not because they have medical complications. Mm -hmm. It's because they, they want, want to risk it. They, it's because they want some form of, you know, assurance for the child, you know, the child's future. Correct me if I'm wrong. So, you see, I think, first of all, we need to understand <laughs> what medical tourism is. Okay, please a, tell us. A, a lot of times people... Um, you know, it's, it's a misnomer to a lot of people. It, it, there's an assumption that medical tourism is only related to the access of healthcare abroad. Internationally, you leave your country, you go abroad, and you go and access quality healthcare. However, you also have, you know, intra medical tourism. Medical tourism basically is when a patient moves from one place to the other looking for better quality of healthcare. Okay. You know, based on whatever indices they think that is good quality. Um, and when I look at these issues, I always apply what I call a pesto to it, a political, economical, social, technological, and legislative. And it, it sort of helps me to understand the reason why people move, move around looking for health care. Yeah. Now, the assumption a lot of times, like you said, is that, you know, they're looking for better health care. But a lot of times also, it can also be because of the social status. People That's want it. to travel abroad and um, have their children. But it does not negate the fact that the ability to get good, good quality health care in this country is very limited. Nigeria as a country uh, documented exports about $1 billion in, in medical tourism, if patients traveling abroad. Uh, but again, you look inwards and you see that Nigerians are also spending about 2.7 trillion naira within out of Nigeria. pocket. Yeah, within Nigeria, from the private sector, the same group of people that we say do not have any money. But the, the truth is, when when people are accessing care, it's not just in hospitals. They also go to babalaos, they go to churches, <laughs> they go to pharmacies, um, they go to pharmacies, and yeah. these are all the places that they expend healthcare. It's it's about cash flow. It's about how much money do I have to access the quality of care that I can yeah. get. So it, it goes in two spectrums. For the rich, it's, I can go to Germany, I can go to India, anywhere. I can go to you know, anywhere to access good quality health care. For the poor, is I can go to this chemist, I can go to this hospital. The primary health care centers. So, uh, so medical tourism is... Well, it's, it's not true. just going abroad. It's, not just it's going even abroad. within. It's also so happens. I can leave. So I know people that would leave Lagos to go to Ibadan, to go to Edo State, you know, because they hear that there's a very good hospital there. Exactly. You know, some people go to the north to go and have the exactly. operations done. So within Nigeria, you can also you, there's also medical, medical tourism. Yeah, you yeah. can also call it's it medical tourism. It's just a is the search for quality health care to what you ascribe as quality. It can yeah. be an environment. So based on your indices, yes. you know, do you think, you know, because I was talking to a common friend of ours, F1, he was saying to me that, oh, the health has really, really improved and all of that, blah, blah, blah. But we see, we go to hospitals and we see that these things, you know, it's like sometimes almost like frying pan to fire. You wish you were home. Do you see that, I mean, do you see that we are truly improving, you know, the steps that has been taken so far? I don't want to mention the government, but, you know, people are of the opinion that the government is doing a lot of work in the medical sector. But because of the years of decay that, has, that, sector has, that this sector has suffered, people are not able to, to feel the pause, I mean, feel the impact right now. Mm -hmm. So do you think that we are, we are getting there in terms of, you know, um, the quality of healthcare that we're receiving within the country, Nigeria. 
Mm. Two ways. And let's not limit it to Lagos. Let's Absolutely. Go round. Absolutely. Like... Two ways. Um, the first way is do I think that the healthcare um, system is improving? I think that a lot of processes have been instigated to ensure that we have better quality health care, yeah. but I'm not too sure that those processes have actually yielded much outcomes. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done. And for us to actually move that from inputs mm. to outcomes, it uh, it's also requires a mind change. Yeah. You know, a lot of people think that the only person or the only body to provide quality health care is government. Government cannot do it alone. The country can can give us a I, I thought of something. So, I was thinking of something. I'm sorry to cut you, Uti. Now, a lot of people spend so much amount of money traveling out mm -hmm. to to give birth. Some as much as twenty three thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and that's just for hospitals. So yeah. plus accommodation and everything, you're looking at almost fifty thousand yeah. dollars. I'm sure that if you get one or two more friends who have that amount of money to just build maybe a free hospital or something. I'm sure that can put up the structure. Maybe not with 1,000 rooms, 1,000 beds, but maybe at least 20, where people can trust and say, you know what, I can go here and it's I so trust this is that they're going to have. So you they're see. They're going after something different. That's something different. So, yeah. no, I'm it's just saying, I understand, I understand they're going after something different, but I'm saying that Solutions. except, yeah, except we stop thinking of that something different, then these are one of the ways that we can build Nigeria and just let people like trust within us again. Yes. But you are still looking so again. So it has to be, and that was what I was going to say, that it has to be a collaborative effort. You cannot look at solving the issues in the healthcare system in isolation. <laughs> For example, I will give you a, uh, an example of why people go and have kids in America. It's not because they don't think they can have kids here, but they are securing their child's future in terms of social amenities. So for example, if a child is an American citizen and you've had that baby there and he gets an American passport, he can return and have free education. He can get free health care. He can have access to pub, um, he can have recourse to public funds. Those are the things that are not available in Nigeria. So it's not a lot of, it's not a, a lot more than, you know, being able to deliver safely in Nigeria. Of course, there are a lot of hospitals where you can deliver safely. But it's also the absence of other social factors. What I'm saying is, if child. we could step away from this mentality of... But we let cannot people, step away, on, because that is the reality, Sandy. No, but we are, we are trying to no, change Sandy, a mindset here. Yeah, we are trying solution. to change things. So but if I people can that, step away from that mentality no, let, of so selfishness, me, trying, myself, and I... you are trying to still look, and all due respect, private sector, I'm sorry, healthcare, is still a work. government it's a responsibility electricity healthcare education and i absolutely agree with you that the government hasn't that you don't have money is not an excuse because we are spending money on other things there are bills that can be passed that will release money from other sectors we won't start to go into that now but i'm sorry you can't let the government off that gdp is not enough we are borrowing money so how about you borrow money for healthcare so really and truly i hear that and a lot of the time we say private sector come and fund this, come and fund that. The private sector is not here to fix the problems of the government. The government still has a responsibility. And I agree with you that, yes, these people, all these things are intertwined. These people have the money. Mm -hmm. So I'm going abroad, yes, because in the end, my child will also have a benefit. But if I can afford to go abroad, in the area of social responsibility, which is what I think you're trying to say, mm -hmm. what are Nigerians doing? My question is simple. I think that there's decent health care in Nigeria if you can afford it. So the same people who are going abroad can afford to go to school here, mm -hmm. which is exactly in line with what you're saying, that if you're going there, I'm going for a different reason. Because to pay $23,000, you have money. Mm -hmm. But the people that can't afford $23,000, the people who these statistics that you're reeling out are actually affecting, what is the solution for them? So you said something now. You said it is a government responsibility. I agree with you that it's a government responsibility. But in a situation where government itself cannot take care of its responsibilities, then what do we do? Nigeria as a country has one of the lowest tax to GDP ratios, mm -hmm. meaning that we're unable to tax our people efficiently. Why? Because 80% of Nigerians are living in the informal sector. Absolutely. And they are not able to be regulated. Not even earning enough and to you be cannot taxed. tax it. Mm -hmm. You look at a state like Lagos State, 
How many people do you think we are in Lagos State? They say we are supposed to be 20 million. We are supposed to be about 23 to 24 <laughs> million. Okay. Yeah. Do you have an idea how many people are taxed in Lagos State? How many people are employed in Lagos State? Formally employed. <laughs> exactly. Valid. So you see, there are issues that are handicapping the government mm. and you know putting handcuffs on them to be able to do what they need to do. So a lot of times, I'm not very quick to blame government. Um, in countries where they have provided um, quality health care and other social amenities, they have been able to tax their people efficiently. So I will tell you, in a country like France, they tax people between 20 to 37 percent of their income for health alone. Is there tax return? No, no, you don't get it. That's their health contribution, That's the contribution to health. To health but people alone. in Nigeria okay, so would pay tax. So you take your salary yeah, and, you and you pay. Contribute but because you know, guess what? This is not about... This France you have called now. Yes. My in-laws live in France. Yes. You know, yes. there was a major um, emergency that they had to perform yes. um, a surgery. Yes. He's 80-something. My, yes. my, 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 my sister's, uh, <laughs> you know, is 80-something. And they did that surgery for free. Exactly. So you, you can't... You see, if I'm paying and I know that I will get the benefits yes. of what I'm paying for... Yes. I would pay. But I want to take you back because there are people right now, they are medical doctors. Some of them are my friends. They want to come back to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. They want to be able to impact, you know, the healthcare sector here. Mm -hmm. But you see, where the government is giving is, is a lot of headache. So if I have, for instance, the funds and I want to come back to Nigeria and I want to build hospitals, what is the, so what are the steps I need to take? Probably, maybe if you can help me answer that question. Because a lot of them are feeling like the government is suffocating their efforts. You know, they can't, they can't come back to do certain things because the, the, the rules are too stringent for them. You know, so what can we do to solve this problem? So, uh, again, it, 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 that question has different... <laughs> <laughs> different it's answers, uh, you know, it's very loaded. So in terms of people coming down to Nigeria to, to improve the healthcare sector, I say a lot of times they come with misaligned perceptions okay. of what the environment really is. Yeah. You know, and when they come here, they get um, very frustrated and then they leave at the end of the day. But if you were a bit patient also to actually examine your environment and see how you you can maneuver through the issues that we have. Of course we have issues, no, 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 nobody's denying that. Mm -hmm. But again, it, it takes pers perseverance, persistence to be able to solve these issues. <laughs> However, like I've said, the way to solving the healthcare system, the future, are through public-private partnerships. Both. So do we have good ones currently running? Absolutely. There are okay. a lot of good ones. I mean, I work for the Farm Access Foundation, and we have been able to institute some very good public-private partnerships. Okay. So, so most of these good ones, where are the cities you find them? Where are the cities? Yeah. They, they, they all differ over. all over. So for all example, across Nigeria? Yeah, all really? over Nigeria, yes. So I'll give you an example. I'll give you Gobi Hospital, awesome. the National Orthopedic Hospital. For so long, they didn't have an MRI scan. And you know, you can you have a broken bone here in Gobi, they would have to tr travel you out of the hospital to get an MRI scan through a PPP approach where we got a private sector person to, to come into the hospital, mm. partner with the hospital, set up a center that these tests can be done, voila, solved. Fantastic. And everybody is sharing, they're sharing the benefit of that. And we we, we funded that process to ensure that, and we managed the entire So how thing. is it doing, you know, since you you, you installed the MRI scanners? Because I understand that it's not only Bobby now. Exactly. You're taking it round. Yes. Yeah, so, so how is it also doing? Have, we also have one that we're working on in Luth. Mm -hmm. We're having, we, we're going to be working on other, you know, places. It, it's, it's going round. And again, uh, you look at the primary healthcare system. You have about 24 to 30,000 primary health care centers. Less than 20% are functional. Mm. Only about maybe 2,000 that are functional. And all these buildings are there. And the problem is government is unable to employ more people to go to these facilities because they're already spending all their money employing people anyway. Anyways. But through a public-private partnership, we were able to facilitate private sector organizations to come on board. Fantastic. Take over this defunct facilities, inject some okay. funds into them, okay. and they start delivering services. Fantastic. There is a facility in Delta State that we did this in, in Egberma Kingdom, 
and people mm. that never had access to healthcare for over 17 years Whoa. through this PPP initiative awesome. begun mm. to have access to healthcare. Awesome. 17 year olds were coming for circumcision. Wow. 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 Oh, okay, you goodness. know what? Thank you. So that's the, that's the hope I'm, I was asking for. And I found it. I was going it. to ask if you there any in any good <laughs> Thank you so much for the, for the hope. And we're going to keep you know, monitoring it because part of the reason we actually asked for this conversation was because of the great work you're doing and for more people that are out there that want to invest in the healthcare sector they can come to companies I mean your your establishments and see how they can partner because the truth is that I believe truly partnership would work but we don't want to let the government off the hook just easily <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. All right, Thank so you. still to come, our next guest will take the couch. Please stay with us. 